In this series of short videos, we will be introducing you to the Military Aviation Preservation Society, or MAPS, Air Museum, and some of the aircraft and displays that are located at our facility in Green, Ohio. We hope that these presentations enhance your appreciation of history and those who lived it. Man's fascination with flight and a desire to fly has always been with us. A quote attributed to Leonardo da Vinci gives you only one view of this obsession. It reads, Once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward, for there you have been, and there you will always long to return. At MAPS, the history of aviation is more than just airplanes. It is about those who have dreamed of flying, those who ultimately made those dreams a reality, and those that have experienced the freedom of flight. We hope to share that and more with you in these video presentations. We hope to cover the general background of each type of aircraft, as well as the history of the actual airframe that we have here at the museum. In some cases, we have dedicated specific aircraft to local men and women. If this is the case, we will discuss why we decided to dedicate an aircraft to them. In this video presentation, we will be introducing you to what was regarded by some as the most remarkable plane in the history of aviation, the Douglas C-47 Skytrain. Of all the workhorse weapons in the Allies' World War II arsenal, none was more widely and effectively deployed than the Douglas C-47 transport plane. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Supreme Commander of Allied Forces in Europe, termed it one of the most vital pieces of military equipment used in winning the war. The Douglas C-47 Skytrain was a military transport aircraft that was developed from the Douglas DC-3 airliner. Seven basic versions were built with at least 22 designations for the United States Army Air Forces. The United States Navy version was known as the R-4D. C-47s in British and Commonwealth service took the name Dakota, short for Douglas Aircraft Company Transport Aircraft. To many GIs, however, it was simply known as the Goonie Bird. Some sources attribute this name to a military version of the DC-2 being the first aircraft to land on Midway Island, home to a long-winged albatross native to the Pacific Atoll known as the Goonie Bird. The design of the C-47 originated from the Douglas DC-2 and DC-3 family of commercial transports that followed in the wake of the DC-1 prototype. The first DC-type airplane was built by Douglas Aircraft Company for Transworld Airlines. At the same time, Boeing Airplane Company produced the revolutionary model 247. The 247 was the model for a new generation of aircraft. Afraid that all of the new 247s were going to his competition at United Airlines, Transworld Airline Vice President Jack Fry enlisted Donald Douglas to build him a better airplane. The result was the graceful Douglas DC-2, with Jack Northrop's famous and virtually indestructible multicellular wing spar design. As it was faster than the 247 and could carry 14 passengers rather than only 10, it was an immediate success. American Airlines President C.R. Smith wanted a sleeper version of the DC-2 for his overnight transcontinental service. Douglas responded with a larger, widened version of the DC-2 known as the Douglas Sleeper Transport, or DST. Impressed with its speed and efficiency once the DST entered service, Smith ordered a day version that could seat 21 to 24 passengers. The result was the DC-3. The DC-3 airliner made its maiden flight on December 17, 1935, the 32nd anniversary of the Wright brothers' historic first powered flight. It first flew in airline operation on December 17, 1935. The Douglas Sleeper Transport, also known as the Sky Sleeper by airline customers, was the height of luxury. 
14 plush seats in four main compartments could be folded in pairs to form seven berths, while seven more folded down from the cabin ceiling. The plane could accommodate 14 overnight passengers, or 28 for shorter daytime flights. The first Skysleeper was delivered to American Airlines in June of 1936, followed two months later by the first standard 21-passenger DC-3. By the end of the 1930s, over 80% of the airliners flown in the United States were DC-3s. The DC-3 dominated the infant airline business from its first appearance as it was widely thought to be the first airliner capable of making a profit without government subsidy. In the mid-1940s, all but 25 of the 300 airline planes operating in the United States were DC-3s. A military role for their plane was the last thing on the minds of Douglas Aircraft officials observing the maiden flight at Santa Monica, California. Like the civilian soldiers, who sacrifice safety and comfort to answer the call to fight, when World War II came knocking on the door of the United States, the DC-3 was transformed from civilian celebrity to military superhero. The military career of the Douglas DC series began in 1936, when the U.S. Army Air Corps boarded a pair of DC-2 commercial transports under the designation C-32. Then in 1937, the U.S. Army ordered a plane built to its own specifications. It was a hybrid design that combined the fuselage of the DC-2 with a DC-3 tail. Its larger capacity and upgraded performance made it an even more attractive proposition to the Air Corps, which quickly advised Douglas on changes in configuration considered desirable to make it suitable for a variety of military roles. The result was the C-47. On September 16, 1940, the Army Air Corps ordered 545 C-47s and 92 C-53s for delivery by mid-1941. They also ordered another 200 C-47s at this time. In September of 1941, they ordered in another 70 C-47s and 50 C-53s. The specialized C-53 Skytrooper was initially developed as a paratroop variant of the C-47. Only a total of 380 C-53 aircraft were produced in all because the C-47 was found to be more versatile. By 1941, the old Air Corps had been transformed into the Army Air Forces and it selected a modified version of the DC-3, the C-47 Skytrain, to become its standard transport aircraft. The C-47 differed from the civilian DC-3 in a number of ways. The changes included more powerful engines, a strengthened rear fuselage to allow for the inclusion of large cargo doors, a reinforced cabin floor to make it suitable for heavy loads, hoist attachment, the fitting of cargo hooks beneath the center wing section, a shortened tail cone for glider towing shackles, and an astrodome in the cabin roof. As a supply plane, the C-47 could carry up to 6,000 pounds of cargo. As a troop transport, it could carry 28 soldiers in full combat gear. The spacious rear fuselage cargo doors could accommodate jeeps, light trucks, or anything else of equivalent bulk and weight and they could be opened and closed in flight to drop troops or cargo by parachute. This made the C-47 far and away the best paratroop delivery aircraft of the war. As an aerial ambulance, the C-47 could carry 18 stretcher cases and a medical crew of three. Finally, the C-47 could tow two CG-4 Waco assault gliders or one of the larger British Horsa gliders. The first C-47 entered service on December 23, 1941, just two weeks after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Production initially was centered in Santa Monica, California. The limited production capacity at Douglas's Santa Monica plant caused an initial scheduling problem. 
European war demands for the DB-7 light bomber, forerunner of the A-20 Havoc, had filled the factory floor. To solve this issue, C-47s were built in a new plant erected in Long Beach, California. When Douglas began to receive contracts for thousands of C-47s, it became obvious that even the Long Beach plant could not keep up. Before war production had ended, Douglas also opened plants in Oklahoma City and Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Oklahoma City plant produced 5,354 C-47s from March of 1943 until August of 1945. Tulsa built 2,099 of the planes and Long Beach 2,832. By war's end, 10,692 of the C-47 aircraft had been built. About 2,000 C-47s were received under Lend-Lease by British and Commonwealth Services. It was also built under license in the Soviet Union, where it was designated Luzonov Li-2 and remained the backbone of internal air transport well into the 1960s. Ironically, the most capable all-around Axis transport aircraft of the war was the Japanese Navy's L-2D-3, a military version of the DC-3. 400 of these aircraft were manufactured under license in Japan from data purchased from Douglas Aircraft in 1938. The formation of the U.S. Army Air Force's Air Transport Command on July 1, 1942 brought about the wide-scale deployment of C-47s as haulers of an incredible range of supplies, from weapons to rations to small vehicles, for carrying troops into combat, for dropping paratroops, for towing Waco and Horsa gliders, and for evacuating wounded. The C-47 was one of the first aircraft delivered by the Air Corps Ferrying Command across the North Atlantic to Great Britain in 1942. The Lend at Least Dakotas began to arrive in England in February of 1943, and several, wearing RAF camouflage, were immediately put to use by British Overseas Airway Corporation on its routes to Gibraltar and Africa. Another early use of Dakotas was for regular Royal Air Force supply runs between Egypt and West Africa, and for evacuating casualties from the Western Desert. More Dakotas were sent to British bases in India. Many consider the C-47's most important mission as a cargo plane in World War II was flying the hump. The 500-mile air route over the rugged Himalaya mountains from Assam, India to Kunming, China. As part of the Allied effort to keep China in the war, they carried everything from gasoline and shoes to medicine and bulldozers. Flying to and from primitive airfields at altitudes of between 18,000 and 22,000 feet, often in bad weather and turbulence, the C-47s soon were delivering 700 tons of supplies per month. The C-47 was vital to the success of many Allied campaigns, in particular Guadalcanal, which ran from August 7, 1942 to February 9, 1943, where the C-47 and its naval version, the R-4D, made it possible for Allied troops to counter the mobility of the light-traveling Japanese Army. In the Pacific Theater, with careful use of island landing strips on the Pacific Islands, C-47s were used for ferrying soldiers serving in the Pacific Theater between combat operations and even back to the United States. American Skytrains and British Dakotas again saw action when the Allies launched Operation Torch, the three-pronged invasion of North Africa on November 8th through November 11th, 1942. Late in the evening of November 7th, the 556 men of the 509th Parachute Infantry Battalion climbed aboard 39 C-47s of the 60th Troop Carrier Group at two airfields in southern England and took off. Their mission was to capture two airfields near the Algerian port of Oran. 
the non-stop 1500 mile flight set a distance record for an airborne operation at that time. The first major use of C-47s came with Operation Husky, the massive but hastily planned Allied invasion of Sicily on Saturday, July 10, 1943. It was the first large Allied airborne operation and the first at night for any army. On crowded airfields in Tunisia, 109 British Dakotas and 35 Armstrong Whitworth medium bombers warmed up on the evening of July 9th. Linked to the planes were Waco and Horsa gliders. Two hours later, another 222 C-47s carrying 3,400 men took off from Tunisian airfields. During the invasion of Sicily, C-47s dropped 4,381 Allied paratroopers. Two months later, far to the east, Douglas Dakotas started performing a vital support role for the British 14th Army in its three-year struggle to defeat Japanese forces in the jungles of Burma. They were sustained by supply drops from Dakotas. RAF Dakotas and American C-47s supported the first airborne invasion of Burma on March 5, 1944 and in the jungles of New Guinea also in the spring of 1944. The C-47 served the nation with distinction for over 35 years in many guises and names, but perhaps its most important contribution was in the skies over Normandy on June 5th and 6th, 1944. On the night of Monday, June 5th, an armada of 5,000 ships and landing craft moved across the choppy English Channel toward five assigned beaches where 154,000 British, American, and Canadian troops were to land in the early hours of the next morning. For several divisions of American and British soldiers, the invasion had actually begun the night before. That evening, 17,262 men of the U.S. 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions and the British 6th Airborne Division loaded up onto their transports, each marked with large black and white invasion stripes around the wings and fuselages. The paratroopers were to capture strategic bridges and road junctions, disrupt German communications, and pave the way for the seaborne assault troops. In the greatest airborne assault up to that time, flying as low as 500 feet in altitude, more than 1,000 C-47s and Dakotas took part in the opening salvo of Operation Overlord. By the end of the first full day of combat, more than 23,000 paratroopers had landed by parachute or gliders. Most of them carried or towed to war by one single aircraft type the Douglas C-47. As the Allied assault units were steadily reinforced and began to extend their bridgeheads and move inland, the American C-47s and British Dakotas played a vital part. Streams of them flew daily across the English Channel, ferrying more troops and equipment to France and then carrying the wounded back to hospitals in England. One hundred of these planes landed daily in France during the first six weeks of the Normandy campaign. Just over five weeks after D-Day, several hundred C-47s and gliders were organized as the Provisional Troop Carrier Air Division to participate in Operation Anvil Dragoon, the Allied invasion of southern France on August 15, 1944. Composed of 396 aircraft, the Provisional Troop Carrier Air Division flew 987 sorties and carried 9,000 airborne troops, 221 jeeps, and 213 artillery pieces. The sorties flown also included 407 towed gliders and carried over 2 million pounds of equipment into the battle area for the 1st Airborne Task Force. A month later, on Sunday, September 17th, 1,550 Allied planes took off from 22 airfields in England for the launch of Operation Market Garden, 
a plan to seize five bridges and open a direct advance route across the Rhine River into Germany. Led by Royal Air Force Pathfinder teams and towing Horsa, Waco, and Hamilcar gliders, British short Stirling heavy bombers and C-47s streamed across the English Channel above occupied Holland. Despite great heroism displayed by British and airborne paratroops, Operation Market Garden was a costly failure. Almost three months later, German forces pushed through the Ardennes forest on Saturday, December 16, 1944, and carved a 50-mile bulge in the thinly held American lines. In the Belgian town of Bastogne, a major road rail junction and key enemy objective, the 101st Airborne Division and Combat Command B of the 10th Armored Division fought desperately for a week while surrounded. Food, ammunition, and medical supplies dwindled, and bad weather kept Allied air support grounded. Finally, on December 23rd, the skies cleared, and 241 C-47s and gliders from the 4th Troop Carrier Command began dropping containers of supplies to the encircled troops. The last major action involving C-47s came with the launch of Operation Plunder, a military operation to cross the Rhine River on the night of Friday, March 23, 1945. Over one million British, Canadian and American assault troops crossed the river while Dakotas and gliders dropped men of the British 6th Airborne Division on the eastern bank as part of Operation Varsity. The following day, C-47s dropped the U.S. 17th Airborne Division east of the Rhine. After the war, C-47s were widely used for many years. Six of them, fitted with skis and jet assistance bottles, were flown off a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier in January of 1947 to support Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd's Antarctica explorations. After World War II, Thousands of surplus C-47s were converted to civil airline use, as well as being used as private aircraft. The United States Air Force's Strategic Air Command had Skytrains in service from 1946 through 1967. The U.S. Air Force's 6th Special Operations Squadron was flying the C-47 until 2008. The expertise gained of flying the hump would later be used in the Berlin Airlift, in which some of the newly formed Military Air Transport Service's 239 C-47s were the first aircraft used. Starting on June 24, 1948, air crews from American, British, French, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, and South African Air Forces flew over 200,000 sorties providing such necessities as fuel and food for the residents of West Berlin. At the height of the airlift, one plane reached West Berlin every 30 seconds. The Berlin airlift officially ended on September 30, 1949. In the 1950-1953 Korean War, C-47s of the U.S. Combat Cargo Command served as it had during World War II. During the Korean War, the C-47s hauled supplies, dropped paratroopers, and evacuated the wounded. The Korean War also saw the first extensive use of the C-47 in other than the transport role. Goonie birds served as Firefly flare ships, dropping flares to light the way for night bombing attacks, airborne radio relay stations, and evening as signals intelligence or SIGINT collectors. The Goonie birds were so reliable and adaptable that the U.S. Air Force still retained 1,000 of them in 1961. A decade after the Korean truce, C-47s saw service in the Vietnam War. Several C-47 variations were used in the Vietnam War by the United States Air Force, including three advanced electronic warfare variations, which were sometimes called electric Goonies, or EC-47s. After early use as a general cargo carrier, 
a few C-47s were converted as warplanes. Introduced in 1965 and designated the AC-47 Spooky, the gunship earned the name Puff the Magic Dragon. Perhaps unique among pre-war aircraft, the DC-3 continues to fly in active commercial and military service more than 80 years after the type's first flight in 1935. It was ultimately flown by more than 100 countries. There are still small operators with DC-3s in revenue service and as cargo aircraft. Current uses of the DC-3 include passenger service, aerial spraying, freight transport, military transport, skydiver shuttling and sightseeing. Its ability to use grass and dirt runways make it popular in developing countries or remote areas where runways may be unpaved. The airframe that is on display at the Maps Air Museum is the C-47D. In developing the histories of the aircraft located at the Maps Air Museum, all available resources are researched and compiled. While well, most of the source materials are in agreement, some of the information obtained from various sources is inconsistent with the majority of the other data. If this is the case, the information that is presented represents the facts as presented by official sources whenever possible. The MAPS Douglas C-47 was manufactured by Douglas Aircraft in their Oklahoma City, Oklahoma plant as the C-47B-45DK under contract number AC-2929. It was delivered to the U.S. Army Air Corps on July 17, 1945, with serial number 45-0928. 45-0928 was initially assigned to the San Bernardino Air Material Center at Norton Army Airfield in California. It stayed at San Bernardino until August of 1945 when it was transferred to the Ogden Air Material Center at Hill Army Airfield in Utah. In February of 1946, 45-0928 was transferred to the Air Transport Command with an initial assignment to the 555th Army Air Force Base Unit at Love Army Airfield near Dallas, Texas. In June of 1946, it moved from Texas to the 594th Army Air Base Unit in Topeka, Kansas. In October of 1946, 928 was assigned to the 54th Reconnaissance Very Long Range Weather Squadron located at Morrison Army Airfield near Palm Beach, Florida. While at Morrison, it was converted to a C-47D configuration. The modification involved removing the superchargers from the engines. In March of 1947, the C-47D started a four-year sequence of assignments at the same location in California, although the units and the name of the facility changed. Initially, the aircraft is assigned to the 1504th Airfield Base Unit located at Fairfield Suisun Army Air Base. Following the end of World War II, and the establishment of the U.S. Air Force as a separate service on September 18, 1947. The installation was renamed Fairfield Suisun Air Force Base. In October of 1948, 45-0928 was assigned to the 1501st Air Transport Group of the Military Air Transport Service. The airframe was transferred to the 1733rd Air Transport Squadron, also at Fairfield Suisun. The C-47D remained at that unit when, in December of 1951, the installation was renamed Travis Air Force Base. It departed sunny California in February of 1952 to serve with the 1701st Air Base Group at Great Falls Air Force Base in Montana. But even colder climates were in 0928's future when it departed Montana in May of 1952 for Elmendorf Air Force Base in Anchorage, Alaska and the 1727th Support Squadron. It would remain in Elmendorf until May of 1954 except for a brief assignment 
to the 1726 Support Squadron at McCord Air Force Base in Tacoma, Washington in June and July of 1953. In May of 1954, 928 was moved to Miami, Florida when assigned to the Air Material Command, followed by a reassignment to the 1707th Maintenance Squadron in Palm Beach, Florida in August. The C-47 was reassigned in March of 1955 to the 1100th Operation Group at Air Force Headquarters Command at Bowling Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. The unit was redesignated the 1100th Air Base Wing in July of 1959. It remained there until July of 1961, at which time it was assigned to the 1001st Air Base Wing at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland. In May of 1962, 45-0928 was retired and sent to the aircraft boneyard at Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. However, it didn't stay there long. In June, it was sent to Fairchild Aircraft in Hagerstown, Maryland. There, it was refurbished prior to being dropped from the Air Force inventory. On October 31, 1962, it was transferred to the Royal Moroccan Air Force under the Military Assistance Plan with serial number 05928. The C-47 stayed in service with the Moroccan Air Force until April 7, 1978, when it was sold to Euroworld California Incorporated and initially registered as N9853A, but the registration was soon changed to N54599. At this point, the aircraft was relocated to Exeter in Devon, England. Records indicate ownership of the aircraft was changed to Vision Air International on July 10, 1978. The Military Aircraft Restoration Corporation, or MARC, acquired the C-47 on April 4, 1984. On October 23, 1984, MARC moved the aircraft from Exeter to Spec Airport in the city of Liverpool, England. The aircraft was returned to the United States in June of 1989 and was preserved at the 56 Fighter Group restaurant at Republic Airport on Long Island. On June 21, 1991, a restoration contract was signed between Mark and MAPS for restoration of the C-47. After disassembly and transport to MAPS in September of 1991, the initial restoration process started. Wings were attached and the aircraft set back on its landing gear in November. The partially completed airframe was painted in July of 1995 with the final control surfaces and Army Air Force markings added in October of that year. The ruptured duct logo and final markings were completed by August of 1996. On June 30, 1998, the Akron Canton Airport was struck by a severe thunderstorm with winds clocked up to 97 miles per hour. The high winds snapped a tie down on the C-47 and swung the aircraft's tail into the Bell AH-1 Cobra parked next to it. The C-47 suffered damage to the left wing, horizontal stabilizer, and internal bulkheads. The collision also damaged the turret shroud and engine compartment door of the AH-1. As a result of the damage caused by the storm, repairs to the damaged parts were started, some requiring extensive rebuilding. During the summer of 2004, Mark required parts of 45-0928 to be used for restoration of another C-47 so the two engines and the forward cargo door were removed from the aircraft. In September of 2009, the cargo door with a parachute jump door insert was replaced with one obtained from Mark. In the spring of 2011, a framework was developed to support the weight of the propellers and covers built to hide the fact that there were no engines present inside the cowlings. In the summer of 2012, the aircraft was again repainted and refurbished. 
Changes included the addition of D-Day invasion stripes, the unit code on the left side of the fuselage, tail code letter, and upgrades to the cockpit section and the navigator area. The D-8 code was painted on aircraft from the 94th Squadron, 439th Troop Carrier Group, 53rd Troop Carrier Wing of the U.S. 9th Air Force. The Z tail code indicated the call sign for the aircraft within the squadron. During Operation Overlord, two serials of aircraft, one of 45 and one of 36 from the 439th Troop Carrier Group, were dispatched late in the evening of June 5th to drop the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division behind Utah Beach during the first hour of the invasion. Mock-ups of the jump lights were added to the main cabin in September of 2016, and replicas of World War II era jump seats were fabricated and then installed in January of 2019 to replace the folding chairs that were previously used for guest presentations. The C-47, or DC-3, maintains a place of honor in both military and civil aviation history. It was the first modern airliner and the forerunner of commercial aviation. From North Africa to Vietnam, the C-47 served this nation. It radically changed the ability of armies to move quickly and their ability to readily maintain and support far-flung operations. That is a legacy to be proud of. The MAP C-47, serial number 45-0928, is on loan from the Military Aircraft Restoration Corporation of Chino, California, a subsidiary of Specialty Restaurants Corporation.